Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, my name is Dennis, so today we're going to do a quick overview, kind of review of the uh, ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. We're going to quickly go over it, uh, show you some of the features of it, and coming soon we're going to do a install of the 5800X 3D vCache uh, CPU in this, unless I decide to put it in this one back here, um, in which case I'll come up with something else. And also, uh, then we'll do some temps and all that on it. Either way, that one's coming next. So let's get on to doing the review on this and uh, just go over everything. And uh, yeah, we'll do an unboxing as well. Here we go. All right, so here's the first look at the box that it comes in. Okay, it has a little QR code on the top uh, to get more information on it. So let's continue on. Open it up, see what we get. So of course, we have our motherboard, and this is little extra goodies they give us. So what we got? So we have our antenna. Okay, so why for the Wi-Fi? And okay, let's get our motherboard out. All right, we'll look at this in a minute. First, we're gonna look at everything that comes in the box. So we'll get this out. So we have our ASUS Tough Gaming Motherboard X570 Plus Wi-Fi User Guide. And as I say, you have the QR code here now, so you can get all kinds of extra information. Comes in multiple languages. You have your I/O shield. What I like about this, this is not your standard uh, silver. It's got a little bit of color to it. All right? See that? Looks pretty good. I always like it when it's got a little bit more than just a plain silver. Helps you to identify everything that's there, even if you didn't know how, especially good for first timers. Okay, SATA cables, which I don't use that much anymore, because I use M.2s, which this is the screws for the M.2s. And what else? We got a bunch of papers here. Um, pretty generic stuff. Nothing, nothing really useful, to be honest with you. They have some specs, so it gives you his contact information and all that kind of good stuff. And of course, you get a certificate of reliability. All right, not that that means a whole lot. Oh, and they actually include the DVD drivers and stuff. Imagine that. A couple I've had recently did not include those, but those are MSI. This is ASUS. I expect to get more from them because they always have. Some stickers. It's actually pretty decent looking stickers too, actually. And that's it. That's all that's in the box. So let's move on and see the motherboard and start going over it. Okay, here's our first look at the motherboard. So we'll start just going over some of the main features of the board. Of course, it's an AM4 socket. Okay, you have the brackets. A lot of times you're not going to need those brackets. You have four DIMM slots, okay, which is capable of having up to a max of 128 gigabyte of RAM. So now there's some talk about the new Corsair memory coming out that you can buy in 24, up to 96 and I think even beyond that. But you'll need a BIOS update if you want to use those. Whether those will work on this board or the AM5 is not clear right now. Uh, I suspect it's just the AM5 but we'll see what they come out with and whether the uh, BIOS update allows it to work on their AM4 boards as well. Now this board has an 8 pin per CPU and a four pin, all right? A lot of times you don't always have that. Sometimes you, a lot of the newer boards have an eight and an eight. So having an eight and a four just gives you a little bit so you can overclock, all right? A lot of people still like to overclock. I don't, but it's there, it's an option. Now, one of the things you won't see on this board, which I missed, but I didn't need it, so that's why I got it, is USB type C. There's no port on this motherboard for that. So if you have a case that has USB C on the front, or on the front of the case uh, and you want to plug your USB-C cable in you're going to need an adapter so I've done a couple videos on the adapters so you can look back on those and it'll show you another way to use uh, some different places on your motherboard to get that feature so just it's just something that's just not there with this say this takes uh, all the way back to gen first gen Ryzen and Radeon Vega graphics processors all right just so you know there's no mention of any particular one that won't work with it. So at this moment, as far as I know, it'll work with everything. 
Now you have your PCIe slots, all right? So you have one here, steel reinforced, and a second one here. Now those are PCIe 4.0. Now the max on your memory is DDR4400. Now that's coming from the manual. I suspect you might be able to get more out of it, but that's what it's going by right now. And of course that depends on what CPU you use. So let's start with moving on. Well, actually, let's talk about this. So this is your line here, okay, for your audio and your capacitors. And basically, uh, that's a big thing that you want to have on there to stop it from having any, like, crackles and hissing and all that kind of stuff. It basically helps to keep your sound of good quality. Now, it uses the Realtek S1200A 8-channel high-definition audio codecs, all right? Now these are exclusive DTS custom for gaming headsets, so you can use those. All right, it has audio shielding, dedicated audio PCB layers, premium Japanese audio capacitors, which is right here, which I was mentioning. Supports jack detection and front panel jack retasking, so when you plug something in. And finally it has audio cover, which is this little jobby right here. All right. It uh, helps to shield and preserve the integrity of your audio to get the best quality out of it. All right, those are important things to have on there. Of course, you also have two PCIe 4.0 times one slots. Okay, right there, and uh, that's pretty much it uh, generically to talk about. I guess we can move on. We we'll talk about the M.2 drives. Okay, so you can go all the way to the 2210. You can have one here. I believe there's another one underneath here. I don't think there's two. Yeah, just one. So you have one, two M.2 drives. Uh, personally, I like to have at least three. That's just me. Um, you have great VRM. Uh, so the cooling is going to work really, really great. And of course, your fan right there to help keep things even cooler. Now, it also comes with uh, Bluetooth 5.0 support. And your wireless, which I'll show you on the back in a minute here, is 2x2 two two Wi-Fi 5, okay, not the 6. Because this is an earlier motherboard that I'm going to be using for a different purpose. And it has Wi-Fi 5, which is 802.11, from A all the way to AC. Okay, so not supporting the AX, just to, just make sure you know that. It has a dual band, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And it supports channel bandwidth HT. 20 up to HT 160. So we're going to start going around the board. Uh, I will point out the 24 pin for power on the bottom, of course, and your USB 3, uh, uh, which is really all there is, other than you have your SATA connectors here. So you've got four of those. So, of course, uh, six gigabyte per second. And uh, so let's move on to the different sides of the board, and I'll explain each of that as I go along. But before I do that, I also want to point out down at the bottom here, you have an addressable RGB. Okay, so most motherboards, you want to have at least one addressable RGB uh, in adjacent to, of course, RGB. But uh, that's just something I always want to point out that you need. Um, well, you may not need it. Maybe you don't like RGB. But if you're going to use RGB on whether it be an AIO cooler or anything like that, most of them use addressable RGB. Um the RGB seldom gets used for much. So, I don't know why they just don't put more addressable and less, maybe no RGB, but they put the RGB just because maybe somebody out there has something they need it and they want to use it for. Anyhow, let's move on to the uh, this side of the board. Okay, so starting from left, or from right to left, we're going to start with uh, on this side, so this is your AAFP, so basically that's your audio. Then you have a COM port, by that is your COM debug, all right, and then you have a channel fan here, you have two more USB, you have another fan, and of course you have four more SATA, so a total of eight SATA if you need it on your board. You have RGB, this right here, I believe, so this is your clear TC, which basically, it's clear RTC RAM jumper, all right, which is just two pin. Okay, and of course, then you have your front panel connectors. 
Okay, so this gives you a nice close look at how all the pins are. Okay, so when you look here, the top two pins will be your power LED, then your HDD LED, then your power switch are the top two next to that, and then your reset, and then your speaker on the top four pins. And now you've got your power LED on the, on the bottom here. They're almost never used. I don't even actually know why they put them on there because you're always going to use the ones on the left. And again, your RGB, you can see that it says 12 volt, GRB, RGB a header. Okay, if it was three pins, that would be your adjustable RGB. This is four, so that's how you know it's RGB, not adjustable. So I always wanted to give you a quick look at that, nice and close, so you know where to plug everything into. I have a video separated on just that, so if you really don't know where how that works, just look up how to connect your case cables to your motherboard and they will pop up. Okay, go into the back of the motherboard where you'd see your IO shield go on top of here. You have your PS2 keyboard mouse combo port. Now you have uh, four of the USB 3.2 Gen 1 uh, 5 gigabyte per second port. Of course you have your display port, HDMI, you have USB type C, and your Wi-Fi, of course, your Ethernet, you have two more. Now, these are 3.2 Gen 2, up to 10 gigabyte per second ports. And, of course, then you have your audio and your Swift out. Uh, Bluetooth is version 5.0. Pretty much covers everything on the board. I don't think I missed anything. If I have, please ask, and I'll we'll get back to it on it. I'll get back to you on it. Uh, I will go over a couple more. Um, you have a couple more. You have... Uh, Fan hitters here, system fan hitters. You have another RGB. And that's pretty much it. I don't think I missed anything else. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. All right, everybody, so that's the uh, motherboard review. Just a quick what it's all about, just before I start moving on to doing other things. Um, we're going to have a build coming real soon. Um, whether I do it in this motherboard or not, what case I'm going to use. Give me some case suggestions for something you want to see. Um, I'm pretty much up to buy pretty much anything at this moment. So if there's something really good that you like, uh, that most people can afford to buy, I'm not buying no $400 case, just so you know. Um, we'll put it in that. We'll do a build in it. All right, I know somebody wanted this motherboard. All right, I build with this, so it's coming. You're going to see it. Uh, and probably with the 5800X 3D, I think is going to probably be in that as well. So anyway, that's the video. If you like it, hit that like. If you don't, well, leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you want to see, what I missed, what you'd like to see in future videos. Uh, if you're new here, think about subscribing. Hit that bell for notifications for videos as they come up. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helped you out. Hope it answered maybe some questions about your front panel connectors, where they got to go. If not, ask me. I'll direct you and help you out. Thank you. Have a good one.